This is the first video in the Finance Fundamentals TVM Crash Course series. In this lesson, numbered A1, you need to be familiar with the layout of your financial calculator's keys. See the video description for updates on where to find other videos in the Crash Course, a copy of my lecture notes on TVM, as well as an extensive bank of practice questions. There are a lot of different calculators out there, and I obviously can't cover them all. But here are three good choices that I use from time to time in the crash course to illustrate the key presses for the different TVM situations. From left to right, we have the HP12C Platinum, the Texas Instruments BA2 Plus Professional, and the HP 10B2+. All of these calculators have their strengths. None have substantial weaknesses. All three are very well suited for any of the calculations that I address in the TVM crash course. The main differences between them are whether or not they are approved for use in the CFA program exams the way they do arithmetic and their retail prices. The HP 12C is by far the oldest model here, having been released more than 40 years ago, but it remains in demand to this day among finance professionals. It is deservedly popular and has never been discontinued by HP. The one that you see on the screen right now is my own personal daily driver and it has worked perfectly for more than 15 years. The 12C Platinum and Standard Editions are both approved for CFA Institute exams. Either would be a good choice if you are familiar with Reverse Polish Notation or RPN. As for cost, the representative prices on the screen right now are for the Platinum version at prominent online retailers in the United States, the UK and South Africa, correct at the time of making this video in December 2023. The standard model's prices are about the same, so if you choose the 12C, I think you may as well get the Platinum Edition. Next, the Texas Instruments BA2 Plus is also CFA approved. This is the one to get if you are certain that you will be writing CFA Level 1 in the near future and you are not familiar with how to use RPN as applied by the 12C. Now is probably not the time to start grappling with reverse Polish notation. Rather choose the BA2 Plus if you are more comfortable with the traditional key presses for doing your arithmetic. Like the HP 12C, the BA2 Plus also comes in two versions. My older version of the so-called professional model is shown on the screen, but there is also a standard model which can be quite a lot cheaper depending on your location. The standard version is also CFA approved. In terms of functional and build quality differences between the professional and standard Texas Instruments models, this video isn't the right place to get distracted by the details, so I encourage you to do your own research and buy the one that is right for you. Finally, we have the HP 10B2+. This stands out amongst these three calculators as being one that is not CFA approved, but it is the one to choose for sensible budgetary reasons. If you are early in your undergraduate studies, or your career path is heading in a different direction from the CFA program, this might be the one to go for. I have personally recommended it for students in accounting, statistics and finance at the university where I teach. As far as its TVM functionality is concerned, it has everything that you are likely to need at a much lower price point. From time to time in the TVM crash course videos, I will be using virtual calculators to help you build your practical skills. 
The two Hewlett Packard emulators are both excellent and are made freely available by HP Corporation. Just to demonstrate how close these emulators are to the real thing, here they are side by side. Yes, there are some differences, but they are minor and will not affect the course's learning outcomes. Unfortunately, Texas Instruments has placed substantial barriers against getting access to its emulator, so I am forced to use an Android app on my phone, which I've linked to my PC display. As you can see, the TI emulator looks nothing at all like the real deal. But the important thing here is that the keys are all in the right places with exactly the same labels. Finally, let's take a closer look at where to find the TVM keys. For each calculator, you need to be very well practiced at quickly and confidently locating and using two main types of function. Firstly, the five key TVM functions, and secondly, the discounted cash flow or DCF functions. I'll start using the emulators from now on to demonstrate. Starting with the HP 12C, the five key TVM inputs are located at the top left as shown on the screen. For all three calculators, you are going to be looking for five adjacent buttons labeled N, I, PV, PMT, and FE. The second group of keys are less prominent. For DCF functions, there is some variation across the calculators. But in general, you need to locate buttons labeled CF with or without a subscript such as CF0 or CF subscript J, NPV, which stands for net present value, and IRR, which is internal rate of return. The location of these buttons on the 12C is shown on the screen right now. Notice that they are accessed by blue and orange shift key presses of some of the same buttons used in standard TVM calculations. One advantage of the TIBA2 Plus is its uncluttered and logical keyboard layout. The five key TVM inputs fill up the whole third row of this calculator and the DCF inputs are located at the middle three keys one row up. On the HP 10B2, the TVM keys are again in the top row and very easy to find. As seems to be the case with Hewlett Packards, however, the DCF functions are less logical. Their location is shown on the screen, and as is the case with the 12C, you need the orange shift key to access some of those DCF functions. A final note on calculated choices. If you already own a different brand, such as a Sharp or a Casio, I do not necessarily encourage you to rush out and spend money on one of the three models discussed in this video. As long as you are comfortable using your calculator and it is a financial calculator, not a scientific one, you will be fine. The TVM crash course will still be relevant for you and you should easily be able to transpose any model-specific key press sequences you see in my videos into ones that work on your calculator.